Tell us about the manufacturing process. I presume it's not a production line. I'm, I'm, I'm presuming it's a much more bespoke manufacturing methodology than that. More artisan skills as opposed to mass production skills. It's handmade, yes. Other than the welding, a lot of the computer tech, uh, painting, final assembly, quality control, all of that is done by hand. What's the price range roughly for your bikes, Linus? It starts from 1800 for the for the entry level and for the top flagship, it's 2500 in an accessories. That's quite a lot of money. How have sales been during this cost of living crisis? It's been on an increase because of diesel and petrol. It costs a lot more and we find ourselves as an alternative to cars and even larger EVs, which is essentially a smaller EV. Uh, sales have been climbing continuously because it's either uh, the pandemic or people want to be electric and green um, or the fuel prices rise or the council pushing out all the cars out of city centers. Even if you're a large EV, you get pushed out because all of the cars are being pushed. A lot of your branding, a lot of your messaging isn't just about the, the beauty and the aesthetics and the design imperatives of what you do. It's also about the range of your bikes. You must have implemented some pretty interesting battery technology. And how do people charge the bikes? Can you plug them into a regular domestic plug socket or do you need to go to a car charging point? Originally, you did have to uh, use a car charger. That was on the early prototype. But the easiest thing is the same as your laptop as a MacBook. You just plug it in at home. Because we, when is a direct to consumer? work. Anyway, essentially, yeah. Um, as a direct-to-consumer brand, we saw all the big problems that normal brands would not address. So range anxiety was there, uh, smart lights, the design of it, none of it was there. The customers would tell you what they want. And then that way, at Essex, we'd be able to implement it quite quickly. So charging is now just plug it into the wall, it's fast charge, and in a couple of hours, you have to speed. So how far can you go on one of your bikes? Presumably, it's a combination of pedaling and power, yeah. uh, electric power. In theory, how far could you go? The entry model is 40 mile range and the top flagship model is 100 miles. On one charge? Yes. And how long does it take to charge? If you take the, the long range from zero to full, it's approximately five hours. Okay. Yeah. But just to top it up, it's a lot less than that. It's a lot less, yeah. No one really goes from zero. It's the same as yeah, with yeah, your phone. With a computer. Yeah. You yeah, just yeah. top it up. A lot of manufacturers we talk to here on the money are suffering from supply chain issues. You are manufacturing a relatively small but very complex product with lots of electronics, steel, um, all kinds of uh, materials, I presume from all over the world. Are these supply chain issues hitting you? Is supply chain inflation hitting you, Linus? Yes and no. On It started, yes, but the, the talent that we have on board, we diversify the supply chain. So that way you can have much better pricing. Um, it, I know a lot of automotive companies that, that we speak to and get a lot of inspiration from. They've been having problems with shortage, for example, chips mm. for all the motherboards. The semiconductors. Yeah, correct. Uh, but for us at this stage, not so much. Only because I think we made the right decision in getting the right talent first before really expanding the company. Uh, and they're able to always find the right supplier at the right time. So for us, it's been it's essentially catching up with all of the production, not just a specific part. So the supply chain has been okay. How about prices? How about supply chain inflations? The cost of so many basic materials has gone up a lot. The cost of transportation, shipping stuff in containers from Asia yeah. and other parts of the world. You must be feeling those pressures and surely those pressures must be feeding into eventually your consumer headline prices. It is, yes. I think as a company, we took a lot of risk early on to develop really strong USPs. We built a very loyal customer base. Mm -hmm. When they essentially become part of the family, they're the early adopters and they really love the brand. When the price rises, you don't want to pass it on. So we eat the, the losses mm. uh, and we keep the price. And when there's a waiting list, which you've developed, you know, you, you, people order a bike at a price. You can't then say you've waited a few months for your bike and it's now going to cost you more. You can't really do that, can you? You don't, yeah. Short answer, yeah, you don't. So uh, if, if it ever does increase for us, we normally take it internally and we don't. The, the price stays the same for everyone. Now, tell us about this brand. Wow, spelled W-A-U. It stands for We Are Universal. Yeah. Where did the name come from? Everything started with an Indiegogo crowdfunding campaign. 
So we knew that EVs are taking place and essentially the same thing as mainframe computers going down to personal computing, same with EVs. And we saw a very large trend in America and China and Europe. Um, then we decided to do the crowdfunding campaign and then we just took all the feedback from everyone to build the vehicle to what people wanted. Um, and then the community gave the name because every time they would see it, we do call it a vehicle, um, but every time they would see the, the prototype on the road, everyone would always go, oh wow.